And we have a map here of Polynesia. Los Angeles is way up here, almost off the map. Here is Hawaii. That's where we're going to start, the islands of Hawaii. That's the top of a triangle that you see outlined in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, which is all of this white part of the map. The second point on our triangle is the largest part of Polynesia, the islands you know as New Zealand. The people there call them Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud. And I'll explain to you why they do that in a little bit. Then coming back here toward South America is the smallest part of Polynesia. You know it as Easter Island. The natives call it Rapa Nui. And then to finish off the triangle, you go back to Hawaii. And within that, you can see there are many, many islands. And that's how Polynesia gets its name. In our program, we like to uh, introduce people not only to the peoples and the dances, but why they do their dances, and how, in some cases, the environment of a culture affects its culture. And that's what we're going to do here in Polynesia. We're going to show you how the environment of Polynesia, that is, the things around you in nature where you live, affects your culture. Your culture are things that you as people make from your environment. Things like the clothes you wear, the food you eat, and the dances you do. We're going to start in Hawaii with the hula. The hula is the ancient Hawaiians' way of telling their stories and keeping their history. Because it was only 180 years ago that English missionaries created a written language for the Polynesian Hawaiians. As a matter of fact, the alphabet of Hawaii is one of the shortest alphabets in the world. There are only 12 letters in the whole alphabet. So the language is very precise and very, very short. But Julie was just playing that thing that looked like a conch shell. It was a conch shell. In Hawaiian, it's called pu. And that's what you use to call people to a luau or to a feast. We're going to show you two types of hula. Those that use a musical instrument, which is what Julie is putting down now, and those that use the hands to tell the story. We're going to start with the puili, and we'll tell you more about them after we do the dance. We want you to have a good time, so it's okay to clap along during the dance if you feel like it. You can even tap your toes, tap your fingers, and if you know them, or not, even if you don't know them, you can tap your neighbors. It's all right with us. And if you're having a good time in Polynesia, you yell, Sue. At one time we heard there were a lot of lawyers in Polynesia. I'll let you think about that one. So let's all try that together on three. Ready? Tahe, Rua, Pu, Su. Wait a minute. I think it was just me again. Let me get this lady over here. She has such a wonderful smile. Come on up here. Come on up here. What's your name? Olivera. Olivera. Olivera is going to help us lead that chant, right? So, this, let me just hear you say Sue. Sue. Very good. She doesn't even need the microphone. Let's all try it together. This is Oliver on three. Tai, Rua, Ho, Sue. Sue. That was better. That was better. Thank you. Mahalo. Mahalo. Have you been to Hawaii? No. No. Oh, but you knew what Mahalo meant. No. No. <laughs> yes. All right. This is Hula Pu'ili. Thank you. 
Mahalo. Well, the Puili are an example of how the environment of Polynesia affects its culture. This is something that goes all over the islands. It's just bamboo. And to make the puili, you just cut them to two feet in length, slit them down the side, and take every other piece of wood out. So now when you hit them together, they create a rattling sound to accompany your dance. It's a percussion instrument, like a set of drums. Yes. At one time, we're told that those puili had points on them, and they were used as weapons. But today, you can see they're just to have fun with. All right. Now, one other thing you notice, there is a man dancing. A man dancing Polynesian dances. Seems weird, doesn't it? But you know what? It's weirder when you tell us women should be doing it. Because originally, in Polynesia, as in much of the rest of the world, only the men were allowed to dance. Unless you were a priestess, you weren't allowed to even dance. Yes, it's only been in the last few hundred years that the ladies, or wahini, have been able to join the men, or the kane. All right, Julie has brought out another musical instrument, and again, something that goes all over the islands of Hawaii. It's a gourd. It's just like a squash or calabash. In Hawaiian, we call it ipu. And to make the ipu, you take the top off and take the insides out. The insides are like a, a pumpkin. You know, it has a stringy, meaty part and seeds? Same thing here. And you can eat them if you really want to. But I don't... Why are you laughing, Barbara? I know what comes out of the inside yeah. of the <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she knows what comes out of the inside of a gourd. Well, after you've taken the insides out, you let the shell dry and harden. And now you have another percussion instrument. You hit it with the flat part of your palm, you get a deep sound. With your fingertips, you get a high kick sound. That's what the dancers used to accompany them in this next dance, simply called hula ipu. Now the first dance you saw, the puili dance, is sort of a game type of, of hula. Young folks, old folks, they all do it. This is more of an elegant style of hula. It would be done mostly by the younger ladies. This is hula ipu.
my home. While Julie was playing the ipu, I was playing these. The Hawaiian language not only has very few letters in it, but the words are very matter of fact. These are called ka la'au. Ka la'au simply means two sticks that you hit together. And they can be any length. Sometimes you'll have a stick that's as long, as tall as your body. And you hit it along the length of the body and you get different sounds. Listen. Again, much like the ipu, high and low number. And then another thing you do is you'll play it along with your foot while you're playing the two sticks. All right. Well now, let's see, this lovely young lady, may I borrow you? Yes, what's your name? Shante. Come up here, Shante. And what is your name? Ashley, come on up here. Because what we like to do now is we want to show you a hula that used the hands to tell the story. The hula is the ancient Hawaiians' way of keeping their history. Up until 180 years ago, there was no written language. So before that, you had to go to a special school, a hula school, to learn your history. Just like you have to go to school here in America to learn your history. Now, the schools there are called halau, and the teachers are called kungu. And there are also good and not so good students. The good students, they get to do the dances. The not so good students, they get to stand and play the sticks like I did. <laughs> now, we're going to teach you a hula that uses just the hands. Now, Shante, why don't you come on the other side of Julie? Ashley, you